Johnny was a quirky, humorous boy, he a teenager. He had a good sense of humor, which uh, apparently I used to have. She liked dancing, and she wanted to be a lawyer and a model. So I said that she could be a model to get her through university, so she'd become a lawyer. Mason was a character, wasn't he? Yeah. Everyone who met Mason remembered Mason. Yeah, he was lively, loved his music, loved playing football, he made you laugh. Yeah, he was just a lovely, lovely boy. He was our soldier. I find it very hard to think of what she would have looked like now. She would have been 19. And she was, because she was 11, she was changing so much. The shock, the trauma, the disbelief in that early couple of weeks is very different from what happens after the funeral. And it was after the funeral that, in a way, it really kicked in for me. I hide my grief due to people not understanding. And I, I do that by just putting a big smile on my face, so it is a pretend smile. In a week of Tisca dying, both my sister and my very good friend said to me, oh, well, we've, we've talked about it and we, we've decided you should have another child. It's a bit like the sofa's broken, let's go and buy a new one. Somebody said because she'd killed herself, it wasn't as bad as somebody who'd died by accident. And obviously, to me, it... Nikki was dead. And that, you know, that's what's wrong. Nobody can really have the faintest idea of what it feels like unless they've been through it. And I think to lose your child has got to be the hardest grief in the world. And there's no way of dealing with There's no book, there's no rule book of how to deal with losing your kid. Everyone deals with it in a different way, I think. Mm. Everybody deals with it in a different way. I can remember sort of the weeks afterwards, it seemed as if you were living life with a, a, a duvet wrapped around your head. But if it felt like a ball and chain, a really heavy, heavy ball that I had to drag away with me everywhere and wherever I went it came with me, I could not escape from it. It was quite difficult sort of, to sort of plan ahead because there were days when I just literally could not get up till lunchtime. I would just be immobilised by my grief. And you don't know whether that's normal. If you've never met another bereaved parent, you don't know what you're supposed to feel. You don't know whether that's the normal thing to feel. You think you're going mad. It's, it was very baffling, really, because um, you don't know what, I didn't know what it meant. Mm. You know, it's a lot of new concepts, death when you're a teenager, it's not, you know, hadn't been a part of my life. I hadn't experienced that before. It's a bit of a blur, to be honest. I can't really remember much about it. I got up and sorted the kids out, got them off to school and nursery and things like that, but it was all very automatic. But I, I think, well, you, you haven't got a choice, have you? You just have to get on with it. Your body just doesn't stop working because your child has died. It keeps going and you keep going with it. But it's not really living, it's just existing, especially at the beginning. With a child, you just don't get over it. I suppose if it's someone older, that's lived their life and their time comes, they pass, you know, you bury them and after a little while, yeah, you do get over it. But with a child, it just sticks with you forever, I think.
it's not what you expect. It's not the right cycle of life, especially if my brother was 14 years younger than me. Obviously, you love your parents, you love your grandparents, but you know that they're going to pass away before you do or your siblings do. And it's like you've lost your whole history, your whole past, because you've grown up with them. You're sharing things with them. It's not something that you move on from. You don't move forward from it. Because you have no new memories of your child, if you have new memories, if your child has gone away to university, your child's come back, your child's had children, you have new memories to replace the, or to add to the old ones. We don't have any new memories to add to the old ones, so I am tied to the 23 years that Oliver was here. And I'm sure my friends get bored with the stories I tell because they're all always the same ones. But when you lose a child, you lose just, you lose a part of you. I mean, it really does break your heart. You're never the same again. It takes away your innocence and your security. So you can never feel safe ever again. The worst thing ever has happened. I have had somebody cross the street to avoid me in the early days and that was very hurtful because that was a person whose children had grown up with my children, yeah. And we're fine now, but those few early days I just couldn't believe. Why did they cross the road? That was really, really hard to deal with because actually just to come up and, and put your arm around somebody would have been all that I needed, that just a hug and no words, didn't have to talk. But the person chose to walk across the road to avoid me. One of the hard things is when you talk about your child and there's either a silence, there's a change of subject, there's an embarrassed cough, somebody gets up to make a cup of coffee, the friends that will listen and not change the subject are very few and far between. I just remember somebody recently saying, oh, not having that person around because they're not much fun. I thought, oh, I bet I'm, I bet I'm like that for lots of people. I'm not much fun anymore. It's a terrible thing to think that you bring up so much pain for people. You become like the bad fairy at a happy gathering. It's their worst fear. That it's a reminder that your children can die and that they can die in seconds and in very ordinary ways. Grief is, is, is frightening because it's raw. It's not something that we see a lot of. With all the reality TV we see, it's not real. When you see somebody who's grieving for their child or for somebody they love. It's a terrible thing to see. Talking helps, really does help. What brought me back to my sort of self was when I, when I went to Compassionate Friends. That was what brought me back. And the minute I walked through the doors, I just felt safe and I felt it's good to be here. And you see other people who are perhaps more recently bereaved who are really expressing terrible pain and real anguish and People don't run away. Before we went there, we were concerned, what's it going to be like? Are these people going to be nice? Are we going to be comfortable? 
And as soon as we got there, they made us welcome. And we found that the people were normal in, in our unnormal circumstances. Initially, people are very frightened, very worried. Uh, am I going mad? No, you're not. You know, will I die from this? No, you won't. You definitely won't. You know, something awful has happened to you, something dreadful, but you're not awful and you're not dreadful. You're quite normal. The first thing she said to me was, who are you here to remember? And I said, I'm here to remember my son Joshua. But those words meant everything. And at that point I thought, it's going to be OK. This weekend's going to be OK for me because if people have learned to speak freely about your child who's no longer here, your dead child, then there's hope for a future that doesn't have to be so, so silent. They let us speak for the whole two hours. And we both came out of there, didn't we? And we just thought, oh my God, these people so know how we feel. And how we feel is normal. This is normal feeling. I think that's the only time you're gonna be in a room full of people that have all at one time thought about taking their own life, that life's not worth living without their child. And you can freely say that. And for us, we just got so much from it. Mm -hmm. And for George, because there was other, other dads there, wasn't there? Yeah, mm, there were other fathers there as well. Yeah, which was We great. were willing to talk. I'll never forget that very first phone call that I made a month after she died. I thought about it for a couple of weeks before I did pick up the phone. And I made that call and I spoke to a, a lovely man who said, I have got some of the best friends that I wish I never had. There is this, this, this lovely feeling of compassion, hence the name, but this, this bond between people. In our local group, we have monthly meetings, everybody gets together. We chat about all sorts of things, all sorts of different things, but there is that bond and that fantastic feeling of togetherness. My life would be very different if I hadn't had the support from the compassionate friends. I think I'd feel I'd feel that a big part of me would be would be locked away now because it just would not be acceptable to expose it in the in the outside world. If I hadn't found out about the compassionate friends, I don't know where I would be now because I I would outside of the compassionate friends, I haven't met any of the bereaved parents in six years and so I would still be thinking I was the only one. There's a lot about grieving that's doing, grieving is doing and it's not just feeling dreadful in a dark room. If you do stuff, you express stuff and, and it's active and that's when, you, that's when you move forward in grief I think is when you express your love because grief is about love. And um, no one can tell you what you need to do because it is about love and it's about your unique relationship with that person who's died. And only you can possibly find the right symbols or metaphors or things that express that. No, no one can lecture you. You can't read a book that tells you. It comes from within that stuff. And that's why I think um, when I see siblings that are very wrapped up in their parents' grief, I, I, I respect it and I know where they are and I, 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 I definitely have <clears throat> I've been that person. Um, when, you, when you move forward is when you find the thing that expresses your grief and that's important to do.
it's fine, you can talk to us and you can say the child's name. It won't upset us to talk about them. And if we do look upset, you're not making us upset. It's more upsetting day to day for people to never say their name and to not acknowledge that you have a child who's dead. That's much more upsetting when people ignore the fact that I've got a daughter. So say their name out loud.